Hi everyone, a very warm welcome to everyone in this today's session. Today we are going to see uh, chapter 5 of class 10th biology. Okay, that is transpiration. Now, children, uh, today we are going to start the fifth chapter of uh, bio, that is transpiration. So it will be your unit 2, plant physiology, as you know it is going on. Okay, so it is the uh, second chapter of uh, plant physiology okay so yep so let's start our fifth chapter transpiration okay so yeah so children uh, as you can see in this photo as well okay so this image what does it say okay what does it say means you can see the leaves okay and the water droplets on that particular leaves okay what it reflects to you means what do you mean by this okay some some of the droplets are coming from the sky okay but some are coming from the leaf itself okay some are coming from the leaf itself and this process is known as the for uh, transpiration okay so let's be understood what what is transpiration okay how it works what is its mechanism everything okay so let's start before that uh, let's start out today's day with a beautiful quote okay that is yeah we ponder that the problem is too bulky sometimes we are too tiny that we cannot grasp it okay means we think that the problem is too big we cannot hold it we cannot control it okay but it's not like that sometimes we are not able to uh, solve that particular problem means we are unable to solve that crisis okay so it is just uh, because of time means uh, we, uh, what's the time is going on okay sometimes you are you are very weak sometimes you are very strong okay so this uh, this depends on time means what time what time is going on on that particular time what is your capacity what is your tendency that you can grasp it or not okay so we think that this problem is very vague we cannot control it but it's not like that sometimes we are unable to grasp we are unable to hold that problem okay so that's what it's mean okay so yeah let's start our today's topic that is transpiration okay so uh, let me tell you what is transpiration children transpiration is uh, the loss of water in a form of water vapors from the aerial parts of the plant now what is the aerial part of the plants which has minute pores isn't it the aerial part that is our leaf only okay leaves are known as the aerial part because they are having the minute opening that is known as the stomata okay so my one question to you on which side a leaf is having the maximum stomata on the upper side or all the lower side on which epidermis uh, answer this question okay so yeah yeah let's see transpiration as i told you that transpiration is a process of loss of water in a form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the plants okay that is the leaf only okay so as you can see this is a plant okay so the water is going from the ground itself okay the water is going because uh, due to suction force the plant is extracting water from the ground and this water is coming from the ground to the stem and it is uh, distributed to the entire part of the plants after that uh, if a water is uh, sorry if a plant is having uh, like uh, excess amount of water so it it is transpire it is transpire from the aerial parts of the plants and this process is known as the transpiration now this is having a benefit to the plants okay don't ponder that uh, it uh, um, the water is wasted okay it is having the benefit for the plant because it gives the cooling effect to the plant isn't it see as i told you in our previous chapter uh, previous topic that when we perspire okay when we perspire so after perspiration we felt uh, we are having some cooling effect in our body okay same plants are also having in in the scorching sum or in the summer days uh, uh, in the summer days the plant uh, when 
the, when uh, the plant is having the excess amount of water. So the, uh, uh, the rest amount of water is, press, uh, it is uh, transpired from the minute opening that is the stomata, okay? And it gives, to, uh, it gives the uh, cooling effect to the plant, which is very important, okay, which is, uh, which is very crucial for the plant as well, okay? So uh, this is having a benefit. And water, okay, the water vapor, which, uh, which, uh, uh, which is uh, coming from the uh, stomata to the, they goes to the atmosphere and again they come in a form of rain okay so this is there is no fall okay there is no disadvantage of transpiration there is always a uh, advantage of transpiration because it brings more and more rain okay automatically the water cycle goes to the ground only okay it goes from the ground it automatically come back to the ground only okay means it goes uh, the water vapors are going in the atmosphere it again come in a form of water droplets okay in a form of rain on the earth and this is this how water cycle works isn't it so this is transpiration okay as i told you transpiration is the loss of water in a form of water vapors okay so let's see transpiration is a very useful process for plants due to two reasons as i told you the two reasons the first one is the creating suction force okay what is suction force as I told you, the force which, is, which roots apply to the uh, a board of the plants means the root is applying the force to the stem of the plants, which enable uh, to uh, which takes the minerals and water and all the useful stuff from the soil to the uh, plant, which um, help in enhancement as well. Okay, so this is uh, the first reason is the creating suction force in the stem to enable the root to absorb water. And second is for cooling the plant, for giving the cooling effect as well as I told you right now. Okay. So this is the two benefits. You should learn them. The first one is they create the suction force. Okay. And next is they provide the cooling effect. Okay. To the plant. So. Yep. Now what is transpiration? Now uh, here nothing is saying. They are saying that in the total amount of water suppose we are um, plant takes 100 amount of water okay 100 percent of water okay suppose pl a plant takes 100 percent of water so the two percent water only the two percent water that is a very small quantity okay the two percent um, water only is used up by the plant uh, in their in their processes like photosynthesis for making food okay and other activities Okay, only 2%, that is very less. Among 100%, only 2% water is uh, used up by the plant. Okay, and rest 98%. Rest 98% is transpired into the atmosphere. Rest 98% is transpired into the atmosphere in a form of water vapors. And that's why it, contribute to, it contributed to bringing rain. This is the main factor. Okay, if there will be the question in your exam that how plants contributed to bringing rain. So this will be the particular answer. Okay, that the plant use only 2% of water. Okay, among 100% of water. And rest 98% water has been evaporated, has been transpired into the atmosphere. And it, it contributed in bringing rain. Means it comes back in a form of a water, uh, in a droplets. Okay, water droplets. And hence it helps in bringing rain okay so this is the crucial factor of a plant because it gives it it not only provide us uh, fruits and these all things but they provide us rain as well which is very mandatory for us okay which is very mandatory for not only us for plants as well okay because ultimately plant is the producer okay they are only the producer they only produce the food and we extract that food from the plant whether we are eating the and uh, whether we are eating any flesh or a fruit or anything like this all the things are coming from the plant only okay the plant is the base of the existence of an organism okay if plant is if plant would be a uh, bone to uh, if plants bone to be survived so we are also unable to survive we are also unable to exist in this earth okay so 
as I told you, the transpiration is the process of loss of water in a form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the plant, that is the leaf only. Okay. So, yeah, I hope this is clear to you. Okay. Transpiration. Now, there is an experiment. Okay. There is an experiment. Uh, okay. So, yeah, let's see. First of all, let's. Uh, this is the image. Okay. Uh, this is an image. Okay, for the experiment which we are going to deal. Okay, so what you need to do, uh, you have to. Uh, uh, this experiment is known as the Viljar experiment, and the things that are required for this uh, experiment, okay, is Veljar. First of all, what is Veljar? This uh, instead of this polythene, you can apply Veljar as well. Okay, Veljar is the nothing but the uh, any utensil okay like this okay which used to cover the things okay so what you need to do you uh, what you need to take a well jar and bell bottled potted plant okay a bell fresh plant okay bell bottled and rubber sheet as well and glass plate these all are the things which you uh, should take uh, while performing this experiment okay so what are these bell jar a plant okay bell bottled potted plant rubber sheet and glass plate these all are the things now what you need to do you have to take a plant okay that should be fresh okay uh, the uh, the leaf should not be built it okay the leaf should not be built it it should be fresh and fine green okay so you have to take a potted plant okay and cover that potted plant with a rubber sheet or as well as with this polythene you can do okay now what you have to do, you have to take, uh, you have to cover this plant with a polythene uh, for two, 48 hours, means for two days. Okay, after two days, you can see that water drop, uh, droplets are coming, uh, means there are water droplets present inside the polythene. Why it is so? Means the rain is not, also not there. Okay, so why there is a water droplets? Can anyone answer this question? This is very simple, very, very, very simple. Why? this uh, polythene is having water droplets though the rain is not arrived okay why it is having the water droplets this is because of the transportation isn't it because plants are uh, continuously they transpire water okay they transpire 97 uh, 98 percent of water so the huge amount of water is uh, still present inside the polythene and rest amount of water has been evaporated as well Okay, so this demonstrate that what uh, that transpiration takes place. Okay, so what will be the observation? Water drops appear inside the um, balls of the bell jar containing potted plant, whereas no water drops appear in a bell jar without a plant. Okay, this demonstrate that water is evaporated from the surface of the leaves in a presence of sunlight. Yeah, children, you have to take one, uh, like a one pot without plant. You have to take another setup without plant and in there will be no water droplets why because they are there will be no plant okay if there will be no plant so there will be no transpiration so there will be no water droplets as well okay you have to take two set up the first which contains a plant the next which does not contain a plant okay so the second one is does not it did not have any droplets why it is not having the very simple answer is it is not having plants so this is the very easiest uh, experiment okay i should say i hope this is clear to you next we are going to see the next experiment in which you need to take the three setup okay setup one I means setup a b c in setup a you have to take a well bottled potted plant in setup b you uh, have to take the same well bottled potted plant okay but the change is this you have to take a cobalt chloride paper as well you have to put a cobalt chloride paper as well okay now why do we put uh, why are uh, why do we put this cobalt chloride uh, paper okay uh, the um, the very uh, i think it uh, the very simple answer for this question is because the cobalt chloride paper it is the indicator of moisture okay it is an indicator of moisture it means when a cobalt chloride paper is dry so it 
द कलर ऑफ दैट कोबाल्ट क्लोराइड पेपर विल बी ब्लू ओके वैन इट कम्स इन द कॉन्टेक्ट ऑफ मॉइस्चर ऑफ वाटर ओके और द ह्यूमिडिटी इट रैपिडली टर्न्स इन टू पिंक ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू सी सो यू हैव टू प्रिपेयर द थ्री सेटअप इन सेटअप बी यू हैव टू पुट अ कोबाल क्लोराइड पेपर आफ्टर सम टाइम यू विल सी दैट द बी दैट इज द बी पार्ट ओके द बी सेटअप इट टर्न्स द कोबाल क्लोराइड पेपर टर्न्स ब्लू वाइल द ए इज नॉट हैविंग एनी कोबाल क्लोराइड पेपर बी इज नॉट हैविंग एनी प्लांट सो सॉरी सी इज नॉट हैविंग एनी प्लांट सो ओनली द बी वन द बी सेटअप इट इज uh it uh, the uh, cobalt red paper it turns blue it turns pink okay not blue it turns pink here it is white but it turns pink why it turns pink because it is the mo- uh, indicator of moisture okay when it comes in a contact of moisture that's why it turns pink only okay so it indicates that a transpiration takes place okay so this is a very simple experiment okay there's no need to read this theory if you want i can read okay so set up a take a small well water potted plant preferably uh, one with broad leaves enclose the pot completely within a polythene bag and tie the mouth of the uh, bag firmly around the base of the stem this would prevent the escape of water vapors from the pot now cover the entire plant under a bell jar as in uh, part a okay now what you need to do in set up b arrange the similar plant okay arrange the similar plant and cover it with a well jar exactly in the same manner as you did in first one okay now the change is you have to take a dry cobalt chloride paper inside that bag inside that pot okay and as i told you that cobalt chloride paper is the indicator of the moisture isn't it so it will turn into pink why it turns into pink because that's why it turns into pink because it comes in a contact of moisture okay so by this experiment we can conclude that uh, this plant it transpired water it uh, uh, escaped some amount of water not some even 98% of water okay from itself so this proves that transpiration takes place so we have done the two experiment the first one was this and the second one is this so this is the uh, setup only okay now ab- after uh, after half an hour you will see as i told you in first uh, bell jar it would show that water vapor condensing on its inner side it is having the water vapors in second the cobalt chloride paper would turn pink okay and in third since there is no plant the plant is absent so there will be no transpiration very easy okay it is the control setup the c1 okay so hence this uh, phenomena or this experiment shows that transpiration uh, will be held in that place only where plants is there okay it where plant will be present okay so i think this is clear to you okay now let's see there are number of methods okay by which we can measure the transpiration okay so the first one is the weighting method okay Now what is this weighting method? A small light weight potted plant can be weighted before and after the end of the certain period of time. The soil surface and the pot should be fully covered to prevent evaporation from the surface other than the plant. You need to take a potted plant, okay, well bottled potted plant. Now cover that plant. Uh, okay, you have to cover the surface of the um, uh, uh, plant. Okay. and firstly you have to measure that plant okay then after that you have to cover that plant and after some days after 48 hour you have to again measure it so what you will see you will see that the weight is slightly less why it is so because some amount of water has been evaporated okay that's why the weight of the plant is little bit slow a uh, little bit uh, like we can say less okay that this is the reason only because some amount of water has been evaporated okay so that's why and the uh, what we can see and uh, the the weight of the plant is less okay slightly less not too much slightly less okay so this uh, uh, this is a matter now you have to uh, you have to improve 
uh, you have to give uh, you have to take an improvement in this matter okay what you need to uh, do you uh, you can be made by using a glass bottle with a graduated side tube now you have to take a glass bottle okay same but you have to attach a tube as well okay the test tube as well okay side by the side of the uh, uh, we can say the uh, uh, the spot okay so uh, filled with water and a tube fitted into uh, it as shown in figure below this would indicate the volume of water loss that can be compared with the loss in weight by the help of baiting machine now what you need to do you have to take the um, bell jar okay which should be filled with water and it should be have a plant okay now you what you need to do you have to add a test tube by its side okay you have to add a test tube as well okay so after some time you will see that the label of test tube water is gradually decreased why it is so due to plant because plant due to transpiration since plant is there okay so if there will be no plant so it will it would be called evaporation it would be called evaporation if there will be no plant okay since there uh, there is a plant so we will say that it is transpiration okay now you will see that there is a slightly less uh, weight is coming okay because the some amount of water has been transpired okay now with the help of baiting machine you have to measure okay or by converting cubic centimeter into gram okay you have to convert the cubic centimeter into gram one cubic centimeter uh, water weights one gram okay one cubic centimeter water ha means the one gram of water okay so i hope this matter is clear to you this tells uh, this uh, tells us that how much water has been evaporated has been transpired okay um in a uh, within a plant okay now next another waiting uh, experiment is uh, this can be made by using a test tube fitted with a bottle and inserting a leafy shoot yeah so this can be uh, improved this can be improved by adding a test tube okay okay uh, sorry we were here okay and then another waiting experiment okay this can be made by using a test tube fitted uh, filled with water and inserting a leafy shoot with no root in it and pouring some oil on the surface to prevent the loss of water by evaporation let me show this picture okay like this you can see in the figure as well okay so this would be the image so let's see what will be the experiment okay you can see children uh, there is a water and we have poured oil okay and there is a shoot with no root there will be no root as you can see root has been cut it from the shoot and there is only shoot with no root and we have poured uh, the oil as well okay now can you tell me why why do we put this oil okay can you answer this question why do we put this oil on the surface of the water the very simple answer to prevent the evaporation uh, to prevent the evaporation of water isn't it that's why we put uh, this oil so that there will be no evaporation of water okay through test tube because oil did not penetrate it uh, oil did not uh, penetrate the uh, the environment inside the water so that there will be no evaporation okay so this would be the setup let's see now after some time you if uh, you uh, measure the uh, measure the weight of that test tube so it it would it would be slightly uh, it would uh, it will uh, 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 we can say the there will be no much difference okay because there uh, there will be no roots okay so without roots they won't be able to extract um, water okay so there will be no too much difference okay so this is what this experiment says okay i am again uh, explaining you you have to take a test tube within test tube you have to take a plant shoot with no root okay with no root you have to take a plant shoot as i shown you in the figure okay now after a couple of time you will see that 
uh, you have to pour some oil as well after a couple of time you will see that there will be not much evaporation of water not much transpiration of water because there will be no roots okay and without roots uh, the uh, plant is unable to extract more water that's why they will there would be not much exp uh, not much transpiration okay so i hope this is clear to you now let's see potometer method now what is this potometer children okay so potometer is a device okay what is potometer it is a device which measure the rate of water intake by a plant and this water intake in almost equal to the water lost through the transpiration what you need uh, what is this this is a device which made the ma sorry <laughs> which measure the rate of water which is intake by a plant and this water is intake and uh, this water intake is equal what uh, water has been evaporated from the transpiration okay this is potometer now what is this method and uh, that's you know what is potometer it is divide which measure the plant uh, which measure the water okay that how much water has been evaporated from the transpiration okay so there are some following type of potometer uh, some are giving in our book only okay the first one is the gengong potometer geng uh, gengong okay gengong potometer okay the first one is the gengong potometer so a chewing of some suitable plant let's uh, let's say that is coelus okay uh, uh let's say uh, this plant is coelus and you have to take a uh, plant and cut with a sharp knife is fixed in an apparatus as shown in the figure below the entire apparatus is fitted filled with water so that there will be no air space present okay now an air bubble is introduced in the horizontal graduated capillary tube which is dipped into the weaker containing water this is done by lifting the band capillary tube above the colored water so that air will be sucked in due to suction pull and it's again dipped into the water as the transpiration proceed that is as the water is lost from the chewing a suction force is set up which pulls the water from the weaker and the bubble in the capillary tube moves along the reading on the capillary tube would give the volume of water lost in a given time the air bubble can be brought back to its original position by releasing some more water into the capillary tube by opening the stop cork okay so this is a gengong potometer okay what you need to do you have to take the colored water okay and then uh, you have to add a reservoir okay and a stop cork as well you have to apply a ruler in the between and at the side of this apparatus you have to put a plant shoot okay now the colored water uh, it gradually decreases which shows that the um, water is taking up taking up the uh, the water has been taken up by the plant and the transpiration is having okay so this uh, this potometer helps to measure the exact amount of water what amount of water has been evaporated the gengong potometer okay next we are having another type of uh, potometer that is uh, the darwings potometer now what is this darwings potometer it is the simplest type of potometer used to measure the rate of transpiration it consists of a glass tube with a side tube a twin is cut obliquely under the water and is inserted in a side tube through a single hole cork the upper end of the straight tube is also uh, that upper end of the straight tube is also corked and at the lower end a single tube corked with a capillary tube is fitted a scale remains fitted on the capillary tube whose lower part is dipped in a weaker containing water an air bubble is introduced in the capillary tube through which water is absorbed the rate of movement of bu uh, bubble over a fixed distance is noted the comparison uh, the comparison of bubble movement under different condition gives the rate of the transpiration okay same as the gengong potometer you have to do in darwings potometer as well okay now what will be the precautions for it okay what will be the precautions for this these potometers okay yep and 
not precautions children and what will be the limitations for it okay so introducing the air bubble is not a very easy task it is a slightly tough task because uh, there you have to insert the air bubbles okay okay next is the chewing may not remain fully alive for a long time because it is not having any shoot okay uh, sorry root it is not having any root that's why the shoot will not remain alive for a long couple of time okay any change in the outside air temperature may affect the position of the air bubble in a capillary tube so there will be some limitations for this gingong potometer as well okay so i hope this potometer is clear to you potometer is a device which used to uh, which is used to uh, measure the rate of water intake by a plant okay so as you can see here as well the meaning of potometer is latin but potos means drink and meter means measure this means the measure of water which has been drank it by drank by a plant is known as a potometer very easy isn't it now limitations has been done now transpiration in plants we had read what is transpiration okay so like all organism okay plants also uh require an excretory system to discharge excess water from their body okay because uh, since we are having all uh, we are also having the pores minute pores in our whole body from tho uh, those pores uh, the perspiration we did perspiration okay we perspire um, same plants also having the pores that are, uh, as i told you that it is stomata okay the singular is stoma okay the singular will be stoma and plural will be stomata okay so uh, the stoma that is the stomata uh, plants are also having stomata from that stomata the water has been evaporated okay so this we had discussed in the beginning itself okay now let's see types of transpiration what are the two types of transpiration the first one uh, there are three different types of transpiration plants stomatal transpiration lenticular transpiration and cuticular transpiration okay these are some three types of transpiration okay what are those the first one is the stomatal transpiration as the name indicates that it is that the transpiration occur from the stomata isn't it next is cuticle transpiration the uh, directly from the surface of the leaves and stem the cuticle cell because the cuticle cells are present on that particular area only now the lenticular cells what are these lenticular cells lenticel you have read this name as well okay lenticel they are present at the old bark of the trees okay old bark of the tree okay so let's see let's uh read them one by one stomatal transpiration as the name indicates that this transpiration occurs from the stomata of the plant okay most of the water from the plants has been transpired in this way and this uh, the water near the surface of the leaves exchange into vapor and evaporated from the stomata okay so there is a separate mechanism of closing and opening of stomata that we will discuss in the next chapter okay that is photosynthesis okay so stomata transpiration occurs in the stomata okay it takes place in from the stomata okay now uh uh, uh next is uh what i'm saying uh, transpiration yeah yeah what i'm saying uh, from uh, this is my question from which side uh, this stomatal transpiration will be more from which side the stomatal transpiration will be more from the upper side or from the lower side of the leaf from the upper side of from the lower side of the leaf okay you uh, can answer this question with this within 5 second i am again saying from which side of the plant leaf have more transpiration from the upper side of the leaf or the from the lower epidermis of the leaf from the upper epidermis of the leaf or from the lower epidermis of the leaf obviously the lower epidermis because they are only having the maximum amount of water uh, maximum amount of stomata at the lower side of the leaf so this would uh, uh, the transpiration the stomatal transpiration will be more from the lower epidermis of the leaf because they are uh, they are having the maximum amount of uh, stomata from the as compared to the upper side of the leaf okay so 
uh, most of the water from the plants is transpired in this way. Uh, the water near the surface of the leaves exchange into water vapor and evaporate from the stomata, which are open. Okay, so this is very easy. Stomatal transpiration occurs in from the stomata. Okay, and uh, the this is all the things. Okay, now what are the factors that are affecting the transpiration in plants? Okay, so there are different factors which affect the rate of transpiration. The first one is the cuticle factor. Now, what is cuticle? Children, cuticle is the waxy layer which is present on the surface of the leaves. You have seen some of the leaves, okay, that is very uh, soft, okay, that is very smooth. This is because of the cuticle, because they are having the waxy layer, okay. Now, the cuticle are uh, the cellular factors that affect the rate of transpiration that are the orientation of leaf. Now, what is orientation? the base of the leaf okay means from where the uh, stomata has been occurred okay the main part and the water status of the plant next is structural uh, pecu uh, peculiarities of the leaf and the total number and the distribution of stomata in a leaf okay this is also the main factor if there would be more stomata so there would be obviously there would be more uh, transpiration if there will be less trans um, stomata so there will be less transpiration this is general okay next environmental factors what are the environmental factors uh, the light the humidity temperature atmospheric pressure wind velocity okay these all are the factor only okay the light and the humidity temperature atmospheric pressure and velocity that is the wind pressure okay so i hope this is clear to you next is now what is lenticular transpiration as the name is saying it uh, the transpiration takes place in the lenticel lenticels of the plant now what is this lenticel these are the cells which are present at the bark of the trees as i told you at the bark of the trees bark means the trunk okay uh, trunk okay the trunk from the trunk of the tree this tr uh, transpiration takes place okay so lenticels are not present in all the plant as it uh, this lenticel is not present all over the plant this is pre present all only at the bark of the tree okay that is known as the trunk of the tree okay next the cuticle transpiration cuticle as i told you this is the waxy layer okay so uh, so that they will they would not be ex, uh, they would not be uh, um, extra uh, water loss okay that's why uh, the leaves uh, the leaves uh, layer should be waxy okay and this is known as the cuticular transpiration because the cuticles layer the cuticles where the cuticle are present they are waxy okay now it is the evaporation of water from the cuticle of the plants. The cuticle is the waxy covering on the surface of the leaves of the plants. As I told you, it is the waxy layer which is present at the base of the leaf or the plant. Okay, about 5 to 10 percent of the water from the leaves is lost through the cuticle transpiration during dry condition when the stomata are closed more water is transpired through the cuticles okay means when they will be hot and humid uh, not sorry humid they will be hot and very dry uh, place uh, weather so they will be um they will be more uh, uh, so there will be the stomata will be closer isn't it so the cuticle they will uh, the cuticle will be open okay and through that cuticle the transpiration takes place that's why it is known as the cuticle transpiration this is ta this is uh, takes place this takes place when the stomata has been closed okay so i hope cuticle transpiration is also clear to you now relative humidity what is this relative humidity uh, let's wait now what is relative humidity relative humidity is nothing but the uh, the moisture that is present in uh, in our atmosphere okay now the humidity and this uh, the transpiration this is they both are inversely proportional okay they both are inversely proportional means they will be more humidity uh, if they will be uh, more humidity so transpiration rate will be less okay so they both are less uh, sorry they both are uh, po uh, like uh, they are inversely proportional okay they are inversely proportional inversely means what do we uh, what do you mean by inversely 
inversely means if there will be more humidity so the transpiration rate will be less okay so and if there will be uh, um, less uh, sorry if there will be uh, uh, if there will be more humidity so the transpiration rate will be less and if there will be less humidity so the transpiration rate will be more okay so they both are inversely proportional okay now next we are having the temperature now a high temperature lowers the relative humidity and opens the stomata even in darkness as well as a result the rate of transpiration is increases okay means if there will be uh, humid relative humidity less okay so the stomata will open okay even in darkness as well and this will increase the rate of transpiration okay so the temperature and humidity is uh, directly proportional next is light these are all the factors that affect the humidity uh, that affect the transpiration rate okay uh, it would be increase or it would be decrease this depends on this particular factors only okay now next is light the stomata open during the day and close in dark presence of light is directly proportional to the rate of in, uh, uh, transpiration okay the light is directly proportional to the transpiration if there would be light so the stomata will automatically open okay in order to make their food isn't it in order to make their food so that's why they open okay when there will be light so they uh, the light and the stomata uh, the transpiration they are directly proportional to each other next is air if the air is still still means it is not moving okay though it's moving all the time but it is not moving in a high velocity it is in a constant velocity okay if it is still the transpiration rate will be low this is because of the water vapor accumulate around the trans, uh, transpiring organs and reduce the diffusion pressure defect of the air so how air effect if there will be if uh, the air is moving okay with a high velocity are uh, not high with a uh, with a moderate velocity so that air which is present with inside the cell or inside the leaf that com that comes out and it increase the rate of transpiration okay so this how air uh, uh, air affect the transpiration now next is water availability means how much water is present okay so the transpiration rate is directly proportional to the absorption of water by the roots as we read in uh previous chapter that if there will be more absorption of water so there would be more transpiration if there be, would be less absorption of water so there would be less trans uh, amount of transpiration takes place because the it's uh, because in order to accommodate more water plant have to lost the, the uh, previous water okay which they can lost by the transpiration only so that's why they are inversely uh, they are directly proportional to each other okay so i hope this is also clear to you next is surface area of the leaves if there will be and the surface area of a leaf is wide it is broad so the transpiration will be more because there will be more stomata isn't it so they are directly proportional to each other next is ascent of sap now what is ascent of sap children when water evaporates through the leaves a pull is created through the xylem and phloem moves back to the leaves this is known as the transpiration pull okay the pull the force is applied from the uh, uh, through the leaves a pull is created through the xylem and water moves back to the leaf okay and this force is known as the transpiration pull uh, pull the ascent of sap that is driven by transpiration depends on the following pro uh, properties of water okay the ascent of sap you know what is ascent of sap uh, the fluid that is and that is the plant is having okay the first one is the the first property is cohesion what is this cohesion this is the mutual attraction between the molecules of water means the two similar molecules will attract each other this is known as the cohesion okay and they, if they repel each other this would call the repulsion okay next is adhesion the attraction of uh, water molecules towards polar surface towards the polar surface polar means the up from the uh, to right north and south portion of the leaf okay 
so if the attraction of bottom molecules towards the polar surface next is the tension surface okay the surface tension now what to mean by this tension tension means the pressure okay the pressure what is happening okay now the molecule of water are more at attracted to each other in the liquid phase than in a gaseous phase okay the molecule of water is more attracted to each other in a liquid phase than in gas phase okay so i hope this ascent of sap is also clear to you you do not need to uh, study these all factors very deeply just read uh, just do a, a very formal reading okay don't read so thoroughly next is how do the plant uh, transpiration affect the climate this is very important point okay how do how does sorry how does the transpiration affects the climate how does the transpiration affect the climate we are going to see it has been shown experimentally that plant gives a large amount of water during transpiration as i told you that all 98 amount 98% of water has been transpired from the plant okay and this contribute to bringing rain okay so that's what we are going to study right now okay so a full grown single sunflower plant is approximately to lose about half a liter of water per day in a form of water vapors can you imagine half liter a fully grown a fully mature sunflower it losses approximately half amount of water okay uh, during uh, transpiration it lose half of liter trans uh, water in a in a form of water vapor so this is very 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 huge okay next is a full grown single sunflower plant sorry this has been done a single maize uh, plant loses about 2 liter of water per day a single maize single maize it loses about 2 liter of water every day and the large apple tree may loss about 30 liter of water per day can you imagine these is the huge amounts of the trees which they evaporate the water okay so transpiration increasing the moisture in atmosphere and it contribute in bringing rain as i told you in the beginning okay that they they the huge amount of water has been transpired so where they where this huge amount of water will go uh, automatic uh, means um, the one day it will come on the earth only okay so this comes in a form of rain drops okay so that's why it also contribute in bringing rain now there is a difference between evaporation and transpiration what is this difference children evaporation as we know that it is the loss of water from the surface of the water bodies in a form of vapor okay this can be this evaporation takes place in any part okay but this transpiration it takes part it takes place only in a aerial part that is the leaf only okay so transpiration takes place in a leaf while the evaporation takes place in each and every part of the plant okay this is the difference first of all difference and this evaporation is a physical change controlled by the temperature and humidity of the atmosphere while this transpiration it is a vital it is a very we can say pivotal and partially a physical process uh, controlled by both internal and external factors okay this is a very important uh, uh, process which is controlled by both the factor external and internal as we discussed right now what are the factors and this evaporation is a very fast process while this transpiration is a slow process this is an example uh, i am giving you an example when you uh when you uh, uh, uh we can say that when you uh, put to the wet clothes uh uh, uh in the under uh, sorry when you put the wet clothes under the sun okay it will, it would uh, takes a very less amount of time Uh, to dry this is because of the evaporation because evaporation takes takes very rapidly while the transpiration takes takes little uh, delay okay it do little delay okay now very important point it is what is guttation and what is bleeding so this is uh, 
the difference between guttation and bleeding this is very crucial it will come in your examination for four to five months approximately it will definitely it will come as i told you in the previous chapters that is absorption by root also what is guttation and what is bleeding guttation is a loss of water okay it is a loss of excess water okay while bleeding is a loss of cell sap okay guttation is the loss of excess amount of water okay while bleeding is the um, loss of cell sap guttation is the loss of water occur from hyd uh, hydrothodes this is very important this is the cell from where the guttation takes place the hydrothodes okay hydrothodes are those cells from which the guttation takes place okay while the bleeding is a loss of sap occur through cut surface okay next guttation no tissue damage occur while in bleeding there will be tissue damage okay because the name itself indicating that bleeding bleeding means if there will be if, if there will be some bond okay that's why it bleed next uh, occur in certain plants such as banana grass tomato etc while bleeding occurs in all the plants okay now guttation uh, as i told you in the previous one guttation is a loss of water from the sides from the corner of the leaves from the cortex of the leaves if you remember i told you guttation is the loss of water from the cortex of the leaves from the corner of the leaves while bleeding it uh, occurs due to some uh, like a uh, injury okay like uh, we can say this is the uh, this is the guttation okay it takes place it is it occurs in a corner of the leaf, plant okay this is the corner only from corner of the plant or the leaves the guttation takes place while bleeding if they if there would be some injury okay some injury inside the in the plant okay suppose uh, you have seen the rubber tree or any other tree when you cut the um, stem of that um, tree when you cut a uh, trunk of the tree or you snatch that uh, tree trunk so you you have seen that the sap is coming out okay the sap is coming down so this is what the bleeding okay as you can see in the aloe vera case aloe vera when you cut down the aloe vera you can see a lot of gel okay so that gel is nothing but the bleeding okay so i hope guttation and bleeding is clear to you this is an important point okay this is a uh, this is a pivotal point you should remember it okay this is guttation if you remember okay so this is the last image okay last chapter image i hope guttation and bleeding is clear to you what is guttation and what is bleeding guttation is the loss of water from the cortex of the leaf from the corner of the leaf while bleeding occurs due to some uh, damage of the in the plant cell okay some damage in the plant cell bleeding itself is saying itself bleeding uh, word is saying that it is due to some injury okay that's why we bleed okay and guttation this is uh, just to reduce the temperature of the plant guttation okay so this is a image okay so yeah with this we come to an end of our chapter i hope this chapter is clear to you okay and yeah uh, sorry for the uh, disturbance guys okay if you have any sound so sorry for that actually one infant has come Uh, in our house so due to that fellow if you uh, listen any sounds so sorry ignore that okay so yeah that's it for today uh, have a good day and bye bye stay tuned for more videos the next chapter that is photosynthesis will come very rapidly uh, till then you can remember these four chapters these five chapters okay so i hope this chapter is clear to you and you have if you have any doubt in each and every topic you can tell me through the comment section okay so uh, yes that's it for today so have a good day and yeah thank you and uh, like my video if you love this um video so um bye bye stay tuned for more videos uh, for the upcoming videos and uh, don't forget to press on the subscribe button if you uh, have not done it yet okay and next uh, press on the bell icon as well so that you will get 
uh, every notification after posting my each and every video okay as i always told you so yeah that's it bye bye stay tuned for more videos bye guys have a glorious day